session, please submit them to the question panel in the webinar. And we'll be sure to get those questions at the end of each section, or we've also set aside time at the end of the webinar for questions as well. And we'll be sending out a, the, a copy of the recording after the webinar if you'd like to review it at a later time. So thanks everyone for joining today, and let me just quickly share the agenda. So just as a quick reminder, um, Pantheon, one of our missions really is to power the world's website. And we want to focus our webinar today specifically on nonprofit websites. So we have two great presenters joining us today. The first one is Matt Cheney, who's the co-founder of Pantheon. He'll be talking about the power of Pantheon and how um, we can bring that power to nonprofit websites. He's very active in the open source community and has contributed several Drupal, Drupal projects such as Panels and Panopoly. Our second speaker will be Nigel Rogers, who's a lead developer at Open Outreach. And once we switch over to Nigel, I'll give a brief introduction of him. But for now, I will pass it over to Matt. Awesome. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to the webinar, uh, Seven Ways to Automate Your Nonprofit Website. My name is Matt Cheney. And I think it's a real pleasure to talk to nonprofit folks about some of the tools and technologies we use at Pantheon. As Linda mentioned, we are an all-in-one platform for website development for both Drupal and now WordPress. And I think that this is something from a nonprofit background that's going to matter a lot to people. And part of what we really want to do today is provide through some of the stuff I'll show you more, you know, an introduction to sort of the platform as well as a number of the features on Pantheon that would be helpful as you sort of develop your websites for your nonprofit organization. I think sort of the, the biggest sort of, you know, starting point that I would say is that as a nonprofit, like your mission is going to be about the advocacy and activism of the particular, you know, focus that you have. Your focus is not going to be on the web technology, the code, and some of the sort of plumbing that's required to get on the internet. However, I've seen lots of nonprofits uh, struggle with very basic, you know, questions of getting a website online, figuring out how to keep it, you know, in a high-performing environment when there's a lot of traffic or attention on the nonprofit, making sure it's secure, and otherwise just like making sure that the message and information the nonprofits are looking to, you know, to tell to the rest of the world are sort of kept online. And given so many of your organizations are you know, limited with the resources you have and trying to optimize, you know, the resources towards the focus areas you have, I think probably the sort of first really awesome thing that Pantheon can do for you is provide that all-in-one platform for web website development. That you no longer need to have, you know, contracting like line items for system admin for your websites. You don't need to set up version control or have to, when you hire, you know, consultants or contractors to work on your website, have any of the you know, sort of like, you know, startup costs associated with getting on the platform. That the stuff I'll show you today from a sort of, you know, website technology perspective is all very, you know, straightforward. All of it you can use, uh, you know, right now and check out. And that we can really get you going up a website quickly. And then Nejo, who we'll introduce later, will show off his open outreach distribution, which really supercharges a nonprofit website development. That simply by watching this webinar and following along, if you'd like, you can go from having no website, uh, no infrastructure, and no nothing at all except for an idea to having a website online that has stuff that's very relevant to your nonprofit organization and can you know go online with a sort of strong uh, platform uh, like Pantheon with a great distribution like Open Outreach. So hopefully you all get a little bit of information about how this works, and um, you know definitely uh, you know make sure to sort of throw out questions. Um, in the chat client, and we'll, uh, we'll handle those at the end for uh, any questions you all might have. So, all right. So, yeah, in general, Pantheon is a website development platform for Drupal and now WordPress. We're very open about letting people try the tools for free. Uh, any development or experimentation accounts are all free and will be free forever. That all you have to do to follow along with the stuff we're showing today is go to Pantheon at getpantheon.com, click on the login link, and then either register for an account, which just requires an email address, or we'll log into the platform. Um, I've already set up an account so we can get going. 
And when we jump into Pantheon, as those who've used it have probably seen, you have a you know dashboard that has all of the sites, Drupal or WordPress, that your organization might have. And I think from a sort of uh, you know nonprofit perspective, I know a lot of you will have a sort of main.org website that's your primary um, primary point of presence. But you may create other websites for specific conferences or initiatives or other kinds of work that you're doing, campaign websites and the like. And that one of the great things about Pantheon is that you have a unified environment where you can see all of those sites all at once and have a sort of single set of credentials and information that you can sort of manage, uh, manage all of those at once. So I only have two sites right now that might be common to some developers and some organizations, but you know, let's pretend that we need to go create another website for maybe a new campaign we're running. And one of the things that really Pantheon makes it really easy to do is it's been up new sites. So we can go ahead and add a site. We can call it, you know, my great campaign website. And go ahead and with just a like click of the button, you know, start the process of actually creating this website and putting it on the internet. Um, getting started with Pantheon is very easy to do. We simply named our site, which created a development URL, and now we're told to pick the kind of web website we want. So we could pick a WordPress website if that's helpful for us, or we could pick a Drupal website. We also have a bunch of distributions, which we'll talk about in the second half of the webinar, including the open outreach distribution, um, which, which Nejo will demo. But that's a specific distribution of Drupal for nonprofits, which will actually you know, really supercharge your, your development. But just for our, sort of my intro demo, I'll just go ahead and install basic Drupal 7. Um, this is going to require you to do a lot of work to actually set up the site uh, in the Drupal space. But I wanted to demonstrate to everyone just the ease of getting this started. That you know, I know a lot of a lot of groups might sort of you know have a lot of conversation around what it takes to get a website online, you know, provisioning, finding a server, dealing with uh, you know getting the technical expertise. But here in, in in like 20 seconds of just talking to you all, we've actually gone ahead and created that website. Pantheon has deployed the code from Drupal to the to the to a development environment. And if we click through to the dashboard, we'll see all of the different tools and technologies that are sort of happening. We've got, you know, the dev site, we have a test site, we have a live site, and that workflow is really important in terms of staging, you know, development stuff that you're looking to do and, uh, you know, testing it and making sure it looks right before actually going live. You'll see that, uh, so we have dev, and that has a specific dev URL, dev migrate campaign website .com. Each of those sites is specifically, uh, you know, unique to your site, and you'll have dev test or live prefix. To, uh, to support those. And that becomes really awesome from a sort of like sanity standpoint, because if you are doing, making a new feature for your website, something that, you know, might go live, you know, with a campaign announcement, say, next, you know, tomorrow or the next day, you can really sort of, you know, get it in dev and then push it to test and really evaluate that before it goes live, which is awesome. Um, but if you're making a new site, you can, you know, sort of quickly go ahead and, and set it up. Um, not too difficult to get started with Drupal. You know, just a username, password, site name. And, you know, in now, in now I think a full minute since we started, we now have this site on the Internet that uh, is, is running the latest version of Drupal. It's running on our Pantheon platform, which means it's particularly high performance. It can take a lot of traffic. And it has all of those tools that I just showed in terms of, um, of options. So to go back to the, the, the dashboard, and this is something, if you've used the product, it should, you know, uh, should be pretty cool. But... You know, you can sort of, you know, create the test environment really easily uh, to actually provide that testing environment. And then you can create a live environment. And those three workflow environments are really at the core of Pantheon and also, I think, a sane development experience. Whether you're using Drupal or WordPress for your development, for your websites, having the ability to have a specific testing URL and a specific live URL is a very good best practice. And one that I know a lot of nonprofits skip because it, there's a lot of cost and uh, traditional sort of work involved in getting that set up on your own server, you know, a Linode or a VPS that you might have provisioned. Pantheon just gives that to you by default and, and requires all of the users and developers on the product, on the platform to go through that process, which is, I think, a really nice, nice thing. So we'll go create dev test and live environment and go from there. Uh, the... The sort of third thing I think that's helpful from just like getting, you know, your website up and running, aside from having this really great platform and being able to get started easily, 
is the ability to actually jump into you know editing the code or modifying that open source uh, open source sort of uh, foundation to the website. That a lot of times when you sort of install Drupal, there's a lot of sort of black box around uh, stuff that it has. Same thing for WordPress. And that, you know, to actually set up a situation where like you yourselves can demo, can develop the site either to look at the code or to learn or to do a training about it can require a lot of setup. Um, for sort of traditional web developers, you know, getting something like, you know, a Git checkout using a Git URL, which we obviously support, um, that's no problem for like professional web developers who do this day in and day out. But even for folks who are sort of, you know, less technical, less wanting to set up that environment for development on their on their home computers, Panther makes it really easy to actually get into the code right on our platform without having to have any more additional technology than just an SFTP client. You'll see that uh, you know by default the uh, you know connection mode for each site is SFTP, and there's some information right here that actually tells you how to connect with SFTP to your website. And so one of the things which I can sort of show you real quickly is if I wanted to change my website, even basic CSS changes, I don't need to do a lot of like, you know, fancy technology or like uh, Git checkout or stuff like that. I can just go ahead and, uh, you know, connect directly to Pantheon. So it's connecting over the internet and I can jump in my code and I'll be able to see really quickly a version of Drupal, uh, Drupal 7 and that code is checked out right here. And that's really awesome because I can go in and I can do things. I can check out my theme. We're going to be running Bartik. I can jump into a, the, a CSS file and just uh, editing the colors.css. I can go ahead and, you know, do really, you know, straightforward, you know, design work. I can look at, you know, hey, we have a header element right here. It's got a background gradient. You can see it here. It's like blue. But we can go ahead and we'll go ahead and make that. We'll make that green. Because green is very nice. And we can go ahead and save that change just right here in the client. It'll upload it automatically. You see my little truck from Transmit that's done that. And if I go back to my, uh, my dashboard, you'll see Pantheon's detected that that's happened. It's got the change down here that says themes, bar text, CSS colors has been changed. I can click on it. And it'll show that I've changed the background color to green. And then with just a simple commit message, changing the background to green, I can actually go and you know, immortalize my change here in the in the version control system on the on the website. This is having a Pantheon on the back end commit to version control that change, but it isn't requiring me to type you know syntax uh, like you know get add, get commit, get push kind of stuff. Not that that's, that in any way people don't do that or nonprofits don't do that all the time, but that one of the things that sort of Pantheon helps to sort of automate and supercharge nonprofit websites is it makes it really easy for anyone to get into that code and to actually make changes. Uh, you can see here, we have we made that change. We'll clear the caches, uh, just an operation in the dashboard. And then when we go, do we go to our site, we'll actually see we have a nice shade of green up here on the top. And that's something that, you know, with this URL, we can, you know, send that around to folks uh, who are, you know, helping with development and make sure things are, are sort of nice. Um, and this is, I think, really, really sort of empowering to folks because you can, you know, let anyone who wants to edit the site, but also recognize that they're editing that site in the development environment. This isn't anything that's live, and it's nothing that's going to, like, easily go live because you have to actually test your changes first. Under the test environment, you'll see here we have the uh, information that needs to be tested. So you'll see changing the background to green. And that with, a, you know, a real simple operation, pull code from development, we can actually go and you see the uh, see the job completing here where it's actually refreshing that code in, in testing. And that's really excellent because um, you can actually go ahead and with this testing site, you know, have the ability to uh, to quickly sort of, you know, flush out that change. So we'll go ahead and uh, wait till that finished. You see the change has been committed. It's now in the, te in the test log. I'll go ahead and clear the caches. Um, we can go ahead
pipeline, which will be really awesome. And that's one of the things that Pantheon does to help nonprofits and you know all web developers you know quickly do their development is provide this sort of easy you know workflow tools where you can go from dev to test to live all in a you know pretty pretty straightforward a straightforward way. Other stuff uh, that's really useful for nonprofits and other you know, organizations to deal with is uh, team management. Uh, this is something that I know from, you know, in a nonprofit web development perspective, you end up having a lot of, you know, some staff maybe that work on the website, but plenty of contractors who come in for individual components or, you know, hopefully volunteers who want to, uh, you know, get in and help work on the website for that organization. That, like, traditionally this can actually be a little tricky to, like, onboard new people, especially volunteers or, or short-term contractors to the project. Because just getting set up with the ability to make changes on the product or on the website can be really tricky. That you know you've got to like you know give them a user account and set up their you know password or SSH key. They're doing it locally. They've got to set up their whole local environment and get you know access to the database dump and you know figure out the files and how to download those. And you know generally it, it requires a fair amount of work to get set up as a as a volunteer which can really limit people's interest in helping on a project or certainly, you know, limit the amount of hours they're spending actually producing, you know, value for organization. In the case of Pantheon, it's really easy. You can just go ahead and, you know, add a developer uh, account right here. Um, so you can go add Linda uh, to, the, to the project. And she's now added to this to the project because she has a Pantheon account. Her password and information is now all transferred over and she now has access to this account in her dashboard and can do all the same development stuff that I was doing. And that's fast. That's like really fast to get somebody up and running. If they've got Pantheon, it's like lightning fast. If they don't have Pantheon, you know, new person at, you know, whatever domain, even if they don't have Pantheon, it's still really fast. Because when you add someone to a, a project on Pantheon that doesn't have a Pantheon account, they get a quick email that says, hey, somebody has invited you to join this project. They just have to like confirm that, that email that they get and they themselves are now set up with a Pantheon account. They're, they now will see that, um, uh, that site in their sites dashboard and they'll be able to do all the development work that, they're, uh, that I was just doing um, all very quickly. And then that's helpful because that's a huge barrier I think to a lot of folks is uh, you know, sort of you know, velocity in terms of getting stuff done. The team management features in Pantheon are really awesome. Other features that really help uh, from a you know, nonprofit and web development perspective is that uh, a lot of the things that maybe are really sort of, you know, pain points right now, things that require additional time or just worry uh, are really easy. Um, making backups of your site on Pantheon is really straightforward. You click a button and you get backups to roll. If you want to schedule them, we have a scheduling option. And that's the kind of thing where like, you know, if you're before you're doing a big deployment or, you know, making a big change, you can back up the website or you can just schedule it and have peace of mind that if anything was to go wrong, you would have a, a copy of your site. We also have a really awesome support, support system and group of support engineers who are happy to answer questions and address any problems that might come up. Um, this support is available to everyone, including folks who just have free developer accounts who are just experimenting or, or making their first website. That you know, when you open a ticket, you'll get an engineer on the other end who will be able to point you at documentation or you know, answer your questions or if needed and make any fixes that are required to really help your site. And this is awesome for like, you know, especially nonprofits who are trying Drupal or WordPress for the first time or are dealing with, you know, lots of traffic or, or, or doing something a little more complicated like setting up a Redis data structure cache. Uh, our support team has a lot of really awesome expertise and is happy to help with that kind of stuff. And then that's sort of part of the sort of pantheon commitment to web developers and the organizations that they serve to make sure that we're really good about helping them, you know, uh, do the most out of their website. That, you know, I mean, organizations have their own purposes in this world and things that they care about and that dealing with the sort of plumbing and the sort of like technology behind the websites obviously um, is not, you know, not, not the top priority. We want to we want to remove that uh, that as a burden for folks. Um, other stuff that's really awesome that I think is helpful. Um, so within our actual, uh, uh, you know, product self, as I said, free for developers for all of the different um, uh, for all of the development features, you can use Pantheon. You can try anything I've showed you and anything that just showed you today. We'll show you today for, for free without any like commitment or responsibility. But if you do decide you want to actually like go live 
with your website. And for us, that means like put your actual domain name on it and open it up to, to sort of search engines to search. We have a few very, you know, uh, reasonable plans for people to actually uh, go, go live. So we have, you know, sort of on the, on the smaller end, the personal and then the professional plans, which typically uh, will work, work, I think, better for a lot of nonprofit budgets in terms of, uh, you know, $25 or $100 a month. And those come with unlimited support. Those come with, uh, you know, the ability to do have, have Drupal or WordPress automatically updated. Comes with a lot of storage and, um, you know, page views depending on how large the websites are. But for larger sites, uh, for nonprofits, in which we host many, many very large nonprofit sites as well, things that need, you know, lots of resources, uh, enterprise SLAs, and you know that kind of stuff. We have additional additional plans as well that um, that you can talk to us about. But that just, you know, what we want to do is cover it. We want to cover the bases. We don't want to be a company that just services one type of customer. That our platform is particularly unique. It can scale to hundreds of millions of page views or deal with just a few page views a day. And so we want to create not only technology, but also pricing for that. And that's one of the things for nonprofits that we really uh, want to sort of, you know, emphasize is that there's, you can, you know, you can pick whatever plan you like to fit your budget and your needs, but you can also change that plan on a monthly basis. So if you have a national conference one month for your organization that you expect a lot more traffic, you could go from the personal to the professional or the professional to the business plan. And that's all stuff that you can do um, right in the product without any, um, without any real work. You just sort of, you know, set up a, a credit card or something like that and, and pick your plan. And that's really excellent. Um, Otherwise, um, you know, we also just, from a you know overall perspective, we we try to run uh, a particularly good operation and constantly try to improve our our product. That we really want to give web developers sort of the best experience that they can have with the project. We want to incentivize and you know support sort of sane best practices. So the dev test live workflow I showed and the backups and stuff are things we things we think every site should do. We actually have this uh, pr product called Launch Check that will actually run some status checks in your site to try to encourage you to set up backups, for example, make sure your database sizes are, um, are, the, are in the right kind of thing, and um, you know, try to sort of provide a little bit of guardrails uh, for that process. We want to you know, really sort of look at, look at the website development process, something that we, can, we have a lot of experience in, and with running 55,000 sites on the platform, we have a lot of uh, information about what works and what doesn't. And so part of what we try to do with our status status checking operation is provide um, provide some of that kind of stuff. So you'll see um, I've got a, a couple other sites that have a little more uh, a little more SaaS stuff that are running for a while. You can actually see we have a product called Launch Check that'll actually go in and you know make sure you got your caching settings correct, set up correctly, your block settings set up, that you're you're running the right extensions. If you have any update information with Drupal, you deal with that. That your user you know user accounts are are, are humming along. And you don't have any too many uh, errors in your PHP log, and that's the product that everyone gets again. You know, sort of just with your development account, it's free. But that we're trying to really sort of take a lot of the stress out of web development and try to like provide as much, um, as much sort of help as possible. But you know, if you do want to go beyond sort of our like guardrails on this kind of product, it's really easy. We do give you full-on access to you know the database uh, with all the credentials, the logs, the config files, the the code, I mean, you know, pretty much whatever you want you can get into and access, but that we want to sort of try to provide, you know, same defaults to let people, you know, let people modify and, and go beyond it if they want. So, you know, that's sort of the a, a sort of general overview of, uh, of what Pantheon does. I'll sort of over to in just a minute. Um, but that, you know, hopefully that sort of, for folks who have been working in website development, especially for your nonprofit organization, I would just ask you to sort of take a, you know, take, take, take a little stock of how much time you've spent setting up some of the, te the techniques that I just showed you and would say that all of these techniques are available for free just by spending up on Pantheon um, using our tools. And that I think from a sort of like, you know, let's make the world better kind of standpoint, like making sure that this sort of like plumbing and the basic tooling for websites is done for everyone and then let folks, you know, let's put the person at the top of the stack. Let's let fo people focus on on sort of making the best website they can. And I think in that spirit, I like sort of Linda to introduce Nedjo, who has, I would definitely say, a really awesome Drupal product that not only sort of, you know, can run on Pantheon with all the tools that, that I showed you, but also will give you a lot more out of the box for a nonprofit 
than a, a website that looks like this with the blue screen that has that you have to do all your work. That open outreach is a way to sort of quickly jumpstart, you know, a, a nonprofit sort of, you know, website. And you know, within as I said at the beginning, within inside of about you know this webinar's time, if you are following along or if you follow along, do you know do a we sort of show in the next hour, you'll have a website running on the internet and Pantheon with all of these tools already set up. And I think that's a huge benefit and hopefully a, a step up for some of the organizations that, that you all serve. Uh, thank you. Thanks, Matt. Really appreciate that. Um, and before I introduce our next speaker, I just want to remind you all that if you have questions, just input them in the question panel on the webinar and we'll be sure to get to them. So our next speaker is Nedra Rogers, who's a lead developer at Open Outreach. And Nedra was a recognized leader in bringing the power of the Drupal web platform to NGOs and nonprofits. And his vision for making Drupal accessible to groups is being realized through the Open Outreach distribution. So he's going to give us a demonstration now and talk a little bit more about the specifics around Open Outreach. So with that, I will pass it over to Nedra. Thanks, Linda. Uh, it's great to be here with you all. Um, yeah. So uh, having kind of looked uh, a bit at the tool set that, uh, that Pantheon provides, we're now going to dive into one of the various uh, distributions and, and types of Drupal that, that uh, Pantheon provides. Um, so Open Outreach, uh, I've been like producing websites, Drupal websites for, for nonprofit organizations for over 10 years now. Uh, and partway through that process, uh, I really wanted to focus on what are the common needs. Uh, it's true that every organization is unique, but, uh, but there's a lot of uh, common stuff that, that most nonprofit uh, organizations are going to want uh, in a website. and, and you know, rather than having to build that out every time and have you know all the the work and expense uh, of reproducing uh, all that stuff, uh, I wanted to focus on just making that available right away, uh, so that uh, as an organization you're not reinventing the wheel every time with every uh, every website. But instead, if there is some specific stuff that's really unique to your organization, you can focus right in on that. Um, and uh, so that's, in a, in a way, it's kind of parallel to, to what's going on um, with, uh, as Matt was laying out with the, the Pantheon platform, in that uh, it, it's about uh, taking care of the common needs and, and freeing uh, us up as organizations to, to focus on the stuff that's, that's really our work. Um, so Open Outreach, you can read a little bit about it uh, on Drupal.org uh, and as well uh, there's OpenOutreach.org which uh, gives, you know, a, a, an overview of what Open Outreach is about and also a lot of documentation. So um, if you uh, navigate to OpenOutreach.org and then click on the use uh, link. We kind of lead you through here some of the basics of getting going with this uh, Drupal distribution, including, well, <laughs> how you would install it if you weren't on, um, oh, yeah, on Pantheon. Um, and some initial configuration steps. So uh, a little bit later, I'm going to go through some of these uh, some of these steps with you. Um, we've also got a showcase of, of sites here and uh, that's a good place to just get an idea of some of the things that people are doing with Open Outreach. Uh, if you look through some of these uh, existing sites, uh, you can get a feel for how good a, a fit this is for the particular site you're building as well. Like most other uh, Drupal distributions, Open Outreach is built on, uh, as a, a set of features and another way of uh, getting a feel for the, uh, the distribution and what it might be able to do for your organization is to 
begin with by, by just kind of looking over these features. Some of these are meeting very broad and general needs uh, that that maybe you know half or more of the websites out there are going to have. Um, you know, posting articles, you might want a blog and that sort of thing. Not all that specific to uh, nonprofit websites, but things that are uh, commonly, uh, you know, commonly things that we're going to want on, on, a, on a nonprofit website. And then there's others that are a bit more specific, like uh, we've got an event feature uh, that's set up with, uh, with the type of uh, recurring events, conferences, uh, board meetings, uh, that sort of thing that uh, yes. uh, that lots of uh, nonprofits have. Um, we've got a location feature that we've built out. Uh, this we've done in in uh, in partnership with a local university in in Victoria, BC, which is uh, where we live, um, and uh, it's you know good for community mapping. Um, and then there's more specific things like a member uh, feature that allows you to have uh, a section of your site that only members can access. And if you're really look, wanting to, to work with, uh, with memberships and organizations and, and contact management, then we've got a, a contact management uh, solution that, that uses a particular uh, uh, Drupal CRM red hen. So that uh, just you know gives you a bit of an overview of some of the uh, features that that are available uh, in Open Outreach, and uh, so essentially your first uh, one of your first questions is going to be how do you map up uh, or, or um, map out the correlation between these features that are available and uh, what what your organization is is all about. Matt previously led you through uh, the steps of uh, spinning up a site on Pantheon, and one of the screens that we saw uh, was a screen where you enter some basic site information. This is what that screen looks like if you had chosen Open Outreach as the particular uh, Drupal distribution to install. And here we see all of these features. Uh, we we have a few different uh, sort of uh, flavors of, of open outreach that you can install um, standard if you if you are community mapping then you'll notice that if you kind of scroll down to the you know the location feature here is enabled because that's kind of the core of uh, of what would be needed if you were using this distribution for a community mapping purpose we've also got membership and there uh, we'll find that uh, red hen is uh, is pre-selected you can also just choose to totally customize and, and, and figure out if you're more familiar already with, the, with Open Outreach, you can just take exactly what, to, what you want. I'd recommend starting with standard, and you'll notice that some of the more specialized features are not enabled here. We don't have events or, or forum or, or location or member or, or red hen. Um, that's not because we don't think you're going to use them, but uh, it, it starts small. And, you know, uh, like any time you're trying to, to build out a tool, you really want to be sure that the specific pieces that you're using are ones that you're going to need. Um, and I mean, if, you, if you're really sure that uh, an event, it, it, an accompanying event calendar is something that is a, is a strong fit for your organization, well, by all means, enable it at this point um, and, uh, uh, and, and have it from the outset. But uh, I, I, a kind of overall recommendation would be um, start with less and then uh, enable things uh, one by one. All right, uh, I'm not going to run through the rest of this install process uh, because I've got a pre-installed site. Uh, so this is again that uh, uh, Pantheon dashboard uh, that gives me access to, to potentially different versions of my site and here is the site as it's initially spun up by uh, Pantheon. I haven't done anything to this site yet. Um, this is Open Outreach uh, from a fresh install. You'll notice that we've got some content here. Um, and uh, this is designed really with two purposes. Uh, we want to give you a, an idea of what the site's going to look like. Um, so uh, rather than just show you an empty screen, we've got uh, some initial uh, content of, of different types. 
it's also a potential starting place for customizing your own content. So we've got, you know, an initial post here called Welcome to Your Own Website. You can just go in and edit that up and, uh, and put in your own information and, and you've, got, uh, you've got your first post. So uh, we, when we first uh, span up the site, we were, uh, we were logged in as an administrator who has full access to, uh, to everything on the site. And that's why we've got all these menus showing up here. Um, and in the initial sort of setup and configuration of your site, this is what we're going to be using. We're going to kind of be navigating around the site uh, and accessing some configuration screens and, and doing the sort of minimal customization that's required to set the site up for your organization. For this, for purposes of today's uh, demonstration, I've invented a, a imaginary group called the Urban Garden, Garden Network. Um, I am uh, have been in the past an avid uh, community garden advocate and uh, uh, so why not. Um, so let's say that this is a network that has a number of different types of organize uh, of, of gardens that are uh, maybe members and uh, and uh, and whatnot. So um, one of our I, I'm going to return to that uh, documentation page on openoutreach.org. Uh, use. I want to point out while we're here that we have a handbook. Um, if we actually scroll down a little bit on this page, uh, you've got links to a couple of versions of this handbook. Um, and it's a good sort of place to start if you're relatively new to Drupal or even if you have a, a good familiarity with Drupal but just want to know the specifics of working with the, the different features that form uh, the, the open outreach distribution. We've also got a customizable version and we tend to, when we work for a particular organization, we tend to uh, produce a, a version of this handbook customized for them and that's why we've, we've given you this option of doing the same. Uh, if, if uh, Often just by putting in a few details about the organization it's just much more accessible to, uh, to the, the particular case. Um, so here we are at an initial configuration. I'm not going to lead us through every step here, but uh, just to get a, a feel for it, uh, we'll start with the with the first one. Where, in this case, uh, we want to configure some of the basic site information. Some of that's already been done at install time, but uh, but here we go. So under the configuration menu here, we're going to go down to system and site information. And here uh, we can just, you know, be sure. I just left it at the default there, but obviously I'm going to want to uh, configure that with my own uh, email address and uh, and the site name. Uh, we might want to put in a slogan. Uh, and depending on the theme that we have enabled, uh, which is what provides a look and feel of a Drupal website. Um, that uh, slogan may or may not uh, appear right away, or we may need to go in and, and do some configuration. So I'm just going to return to my home page, and uh, there is my new slogan. Um, so when, with uh, the kind of standard set of features enabled. We've got some social media um, integration uh, and we can go in and customize a bit of that. Um, returning to this uh, this list here, we've, uh, we've got a couple, you know, I'm going to look at these two points about follow and, and service links. So here under configuration, we go down to web services. And we've got the the follow module settings, and we can configure which of these uh, services we want to have 
links to uh, and uh, customize it there. Similarly for service links, which provides little share buttons, we can figure out which of these links we want uh, to, uh, which services we want to enable and where we want the, the, the links to show up. Um, or we can just, you know, if for now the, the defaults are working for us fine, we can uh, just go with that. All right, um, so after we've done some initial configuration, we really want to want to look at this sample content that uh, that popped up on our site. Um, it's great to have uh, an idea of what the site's going to look like, but uh, obviously we're going to want to either customize or hide uh, this this content. Um, and for that, we're going to go into the content administration screen. So just that uh, that top link there in our administration menu. And the content that was created uh, when we first installed the site uh, is showing up here. And we've got pages that are ones that many uh, organizations will want. And you'll notice that there, there's a few different types of content here. Uh, a section uh, is a basic page, but it can be nested. Um, and so uh, we've created sections here um, in such a way that, uh, that they're going to be, um, it's going to be possible to kind of nest your information so that you can, you know, go about us and then um, we see that showing up here. We've got about, and then under about, we've got a mission. Uh, and so this is what that, that page uh, currently looks like. And if we, if we like this page, we want to have an about page, great. We're just going to go in and, uh, and edit it and just customize it so that it's, uh, it's fitting our organization. I'm going to change the uh, change the text format here so that I've got a, a what you see is what you get um, interface to work with. This just gives you a bit of information about uh, this page and using it um, and how to how sections work and whatnot. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to go in and. Uh, customize it a bit um, and often like uh, although I can of course do this here like if I'm working with an organization I'll just get them to pull together all their existing uh, stuff like uh, very often uh, groups even if they don't have a, a current website um, have all of this information somewhere um, and uh, uh, th that's a good you know source of, uh, of getting this stuff together and also uh, of uh, mapping out a bit what uh, what what we want to put in like an about us section. So um, you get the idea. We're going to go through and uh, customize those uh, sample pages but also uh, to the extent that you know there's stuff that we don't want we can just delete it. Um, or if for now we just want to hide it we'll go ahead and and uh, unpublish it. So I'm just going to take that one particular, uh, for, for example, um, and then you know when I return to the to the home page, uh, it won't uh, it won't be visible. So that gives you a, a, a basic idea of of what we're doing in terms of some initial configuration for the site. I mentioned though that uh, we. Uh, you know, we want to generally start small and then enable additional features. Um, if we navigate here under structures, structure features, we're able to uh, enable now the particular features that we didn't choose to en enable in at install time. At install time, um, and we can enable them now. 
So, for instance, uh, here I am uh, in, a, in an organization that's focused on gardens. Well, I'm going to want to have a map of, of, of all those different gardens so that I can uh, display them and people can find uh, where, where they're located. So I'm going to go ahead and enable that particular feature. But actually, I'm going to pause before I do so. Um, when Matt was kind of uh, going through the, the different environments here, uh, we've got dev and test and live. Uh, I'm going to, uh, enabling a feature is easy. But actually, disabling it is not, <laughs> it's not, as it turns out, quite so easy because there's a lot of stuff that gets turned on um, when we enable a new feature. So what I tend to do when I'm just messing around at the beginning, I want to try something out, but I'm not, I'm not certain that this is something I'm going to keep on the site. I'm going to either want to uh, make a backup. That's one uh, approach here. I can just uh, go ahead and create a backup. Um, I guess I need to, to change my connection mode in order to do that. Um, or I can just pull all the stuff to a new environment. Um, in this case, uh, what, what I'm going to do is by moving my the current site state over to the test environment, um, I've got an, a, an easy fallback. Um, I can mess around in dev uh, all I want by enabling this new feature. And uh, if I later decide, uh, that I, I, you know, it's not really a fit for me. I don't really want it. Um, I can then just pull it back, uh, the previous uh, database state from from the dev environment, and uh, away I go. I was able to to mess around in dev and uh, and then return to my previous state. So uh, at any rate, here I am. Uh, I've chosen my location feature, and I'm going to go ahead and enable it. So while that's uh, going on, I'm just going to navigate back to my home page. Um, and I want to mention that the particular, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the kind of default uh, look, a uh, particular theme here called outreach that we uh, built for the distribution, but it's, uh, it's not the only option. In fact, we ship with a few different ones. Um, experiencing a little slowdown here, but here we go. Um, so uh, This is uh, this is the outreach theme, but this is a Drupal site, and we can uh, choose another theme, and we can also, if we want to, uh, install a new uh, new theme that we don't uh, ship with the distribution. I'm just going to look, um, open up the the themes page, and we've got a few different themes that we can uh, that we can include. So. My feature is still busy being uh, enabled here. Uh, hey, Nedjo, while that's um, loading, a couple questions have come in. Um, the first one is from Randy, and the question is, yeah. how many layers can you okay. create in the members section? Um, may, I, I'm not sure what layers means in that in that context. Maybe we can just get a little clarification. Sure. In fact, let me, um, Randy. I think I'm going to try to unmute you so we can get a little bit more clarity on the question. I think you're unmuted now. Can you? Um, well, offer sure. A I'll bit just more? jump right in. Yeah. Uh, thanks for taking the question. We, my organization, has volunteers who work out in the field and then we have a board of directors and we have officers and each one of those layers have 
different permissions in our organization for access to different documents. Okay, yeah. Um, the the way that we've uh, set up, uh, yeah, it did, yeah. Yeah, so the, so the initial way that we've set up the, the membership feature only has one layer built in. Uh, that is, we create a member uh, role and we assign uh, specific content uh, access only to, that, uh, to, to users who have that particular role. However, the, the use case that, that you've got there could be addressed uh, simply by extending the, the approach that, that we've already got going on. And, and that's uh, a common uh, approach when you're using uh, Open Outreach or indeed another distribution. It's a starting place. It's not designed to do everything, but it does sketch in uh, a, a lot of what uh, would be the beginning place for further customization. So in this case, you might look at creating additional roles. In fact, some of the roles that ship with Open Outreach may map uh, well to to the, the um, to, to your use case. So I'm just under people, permissions, roles, I'm just looking at some of the roles here. Um, we have, uh, you won't see a member role here because we haven't enabled the feature uh, that, that creates it. Um, but in any case, um, We've got a few different roles. We've got a contributor. We've got an editor, and it may be that that those map to uh, to some of the stuff that you're you're doing. If you had uh, a really more complex set of needs, you might look at enabling the the red hen feature, um, which has a, a membership uh, feature, and also uh, there's a, a groups functionality that's built into Red, Red Hen and um, integrate your organizational membership with uh, access uh, restrictions. Um, so, uh, so that would be another option in terms of uh, taking the base that Open Outreach provides and then customizing it for, for your own organization. Great, and one more question. Um... So I'm, um, does that uh, does that help? Any further questions there? Randy, did that help answer that question? Yes, it did. Thank you. Great. Um, and then we have another one as well around the event feature. And is the event feature like COD? Do you need any more clarity on that one, Nejo? Um, I'll just give a, a brief a, a rundown of what we we do have in the event feature. Um, okay, great. The event feature includes an event content type, uh, which we can enable uh, uh, and create uh, create events of different types. We have uh, a calendar that's included, uh, so that uh, uh, events show up on a calendar, as well as a, an upcoming event uh, listing, uh, and if we have uh, the, the desire to integrate with registration, then you can enable the Red Hen module, and then there's a, a sub feature that integrates the event uh, with, uh, with Red Hen and Red registration, so that we have a, a registration um, functionality uh, enabled. Uh, so in that sense, it's, it's similar to what's going on in, in uh, COD, uh, this is COD distribution, if that's what was referred to, um, where there's also uh, integration with, uh, with registration. We don't have co any commerce integration there. Uh, so if that was what was uh, desired, that would be some uh, additional uh, custom development on the site on top of what's, uh, what's available through, uh, through events and the registration integration with the Red Hen CRM feature.
Thanks, Nigel. Maybe while we're waiting for further um, uh, questions, I can just look uh, quickly at the location feature here. Um, as, uh, sure. Um, as with other uh, features that we've already seen, locations uh, come with some sample content. So in this case, uh, we create on install a couple of uh, uh, a few initial locations and they're categorized into two different types uh, and each type has its own icon um, and so in our case if we're looking at uh, adapting this to our use we're, we're going to go in first uh, and, and look at the, the existing uh, type uh, types of locations and, and customize those so that um, we've got uh, and some, uh, uh, you know, appropriate icons and appropriate types of uh, uh, of locations. So here's the location map as it's going to show up for us. Um, and I'm just going to bring up the configuration screen. Uh, which I've got a really slow internet. <laughs> um, so that the I think it's uh, my my internet is for some reason really slowing down. Anyway. Um, so I mentioned that uh, locations and uh, each of them has a, um, an, an associated icon. So we're seeing a number of locations showing up here. So what we, what we would do in order to customize this is first set the initial map extent so that it's zoomed in on our area of interest. Um, and then go in and uh, these types of uh, locations that we've got, we would customize them uh, so that we're seeing, uh, uh, you know, for instance, I might assign the, one of these uh, icons to community gardens and another to native plant gardens. Um, let's let's uh, maybe take some more questions if there are any. Um, maybe a more general question. Um, actually, first we have one from James. Um, and it says, if I wanted to separate events by location on the calendar, such as if the group holds events in more than one place, would I just rename the existing event type? Or could I add a location and a color code? Um, I, can, you, can you repeat the question? Sure. Um, maybe you can talk a little bit more about um, if you're wanting to separate events by location on the calendar, can you rename existing event types? Or can you change the location and, and the color, color code? Right, yeah, one of the things that you, uh, yeah, um, if you simply wanted to say, well, actually the location is a primary way of cl classifying events, then you could certainly just take, um, when you first en en enable the event uh, feature, you get uh, a, a taxonomy, a vocabulary that is the type of event, and we just pre-install that with a few different uh, types of events, a conference, a meeting, et cetera, workshop. Um, and if you didn't really need that way of classification, then you could repurpose that and um, and, uh, and and you'll say that you only really had about four locations that, that were of, of interest. You could just uh, repurpose that and, um, and uh, take those existing terms in, in, in that vocabulary and rename them or just delete them and, uh, and uh, and replace them. So that's one approach that you could take. Or if you wanted to, you could, uh, if you were looking for a little bit more um, customization and not, you know, if you're willing to take that step and not uh, not wanting to just stick with what the the distribution already does, you could uh, uh, go in and, and create a new uh, classification, a new vocabulary, or you could try to integrate it with the, the location feature so that um, each uh, uh, you could you could add a reference field so that each uh, event 
was linked to a location uh, and and in that way um, be able to uh, for instance map uh, map your events Thanks, Nejo. We're actually out of time, um, so if there are any questions that we didn't get to, we will follow up separately. And also just a reminder, the webinar recording will be sent out um, later today, so you can view it um, if you missed anything during this presentation. And as always, if you're interested in spinning up a site on Pantheon um, or learning more, feel free to go to our website, getpantheon.com and you can create an account there or you can reach out to us through our contact us form and we'd be happy to talk to um, any of you in more detail. So thanks again everyone for joining and hopefully we'll see you next time. Great, thanks everyone. Thanks everyone.